I'm his colleague, uh, you can call me Pete. Uh, today I would like to introduce a few things about Huawei's chip. Uh, you know James uh, publicized mm, some, some information about Huawei Hive 1620 chip uh, in November last year. And today we have permission to publicize more information. Uh, due to some limitation and regulation, I can't publicize uh, some real data, so I will give data as as scale or percentage. This is a, a basic graph of this, this uh, construct. You can see uh, Huawei's chip have many groups in a, in a ring, and it, ha it has a doll ring construct. Uh, every group made up to made up of four core, and every core has its unique L1 and L2 cache. L ca the L3 cache is shared between four uh, among four cores. So you can imagine if we want to run application efficiently on this this chip, we have to control our data hierarchy in 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 the group level and in the ring level and in the chip level. Uh, we have a comparison to Hi 6016 and, and the Intel Xeon Go 6148. We can see you have a uh, apparently larger L3 cache and apparently more DDR channel. Uh, we use these three platform to test our to test our Quimpan 920. Uh, obviously, Huawei used their own operating system to instead of CentOS 7.5. And I have to say, we also test open source tool train on the Inter platform. But in fact, the the best performance still comes from the Inter Parallel Studio. Uh, here comes the, its float point arithmetic performance. We can notice that uh, although Quimpon 920 has has been improved from 1616, but it still have uh, have a strong problems on the HPL efficiency. So we write some assembly code to rectify and to locate the, the problem. Then we can find that its double precision uh, vector construction is limited. After we communicate with the engineer of Huawei, they said this is not a design fraud. This is because some limitation. So you can see uh, when, you, when you try to do some intensive double precision computation on Huawei's chip, it won't be better than Intel's chip, but it do have it do has his advantage. Uh, we can see here, 920 has has less latency than 6148 on L1 and L2 cache, and a slightly high latency on L3 and GEN because you know its L3 cache use the it is shared by four cores. But here's the point. Uh, through trading off the latency, Huawei's chip achieve a higher bandwidth, a bandwidth compared to Intel's chip. Uh, but here comes another fraud: is uh, when you try to communicate with ch between chip, Huawei's bandwidth is obviously lower than Intel's. But in fact, uh, then we will see some application, uh, see some benchmark on applications. In fact, this is not a very serious problem because you can think about the struct, the structure. Uh, every group are made up uh, by four cores, and every ring are made up by four, six, or eight group. So, in fact, when you communicate between between trips, you actually uh, communicate among 
12 to 26, uh, 12 to 24 group, you are not communicate among those all little cores. We use three proxy ap applications to uh, test this chip. They are all proxy or so-called mini applications. They represent some some physical uh, some physical principle, but they do not have a real uh, real meaning. We can have a glimpse at all those results. You can see how this chip achieved a better performance almost on all tests, except for this. I will explain that. So here is a normalized performance. We normalize the performance based on the, in, the Intel's chip. The DAO socket is, is get from the, the two sockets strong scaling. First, we, came to, we come to Snap. Snap, in fact, has a very complicated performance characteristic. When you do snap in a single chip, in fact, its hotspot is in this file. It do it load a relative big data set and just perform some random access in this data set. So it's really important for chips to have a low latency. But then when you scale this code up, when you use OpenMP to scale up, it become it becomes threading across data set, the bottleneck. But when you try to disable the open MP and enable Intel's chip, the bottleneck becomes MPI resist. So we find we found that uh, the overhead is relatively sensitive on Intel's chip. But due to the structure of Huawei's chip, when uh, even if you have some data overhead, the Huawei's chip can can decrease this kind of uh, effect according to its structure. Then we come to T-Leaf. T-Leaf is a application that connected with relative low arithmetic intensity case first. Then we can see if uh, you can imagine a roof line roof line model. This case is on the on the eve of that roof line. So this case apparently 920 according to its advantage of uh, memory bound application, it can achieve a better scalability and better performance on single chip. But when we increase the simulation size, and use few, you know, use fewer steps because you know every step you have to communicate and fork and reduce, so you have many overheads. Then we only use 87 steps comparing to this uh, 1,000 steps. When we build an inten intensive uh, ar arithmetic uh, operations, we can see. Intel's chip have better performance. But when we scale these things up to two chips, that means your, your arithmetic intens intensity move to Eve from the roof. So 920 become more efficient. Besides, we use a real world application to test this chip. We use GTCP, which we uh, collaborate with Princeton for years, and we moved this this code to to Tianhe and to Sunway. It's a geokinetic theoretical code uh, developed by, developed by William Tang. You can see this roof line model that shows GTCP is relative uh, memory bound uh, application. The main model is charge and push. Charge is uh, so-called, you, you can see it as a, a scatter and push, uh, a, a reduce push, you can see it as a, as a gather operation. Uh, if you remember the first thing I talk in this talk, uh, that you can run application efficiently by separate your, your 
uh, your data hierarchy into three levels. One is in the four little cores, we call it a core group. And then you, you spread your data in the, in the ring. And then you spread your data between chips. So when we use four threads in each process and use 24 processes in the single node, it apparently have, a, have the best performance. So this is, um, this is a comparison between platforms. You can, although the 6148 have the best double precision performance, but in fact, 920 have, has the best performance on GPC. So here we come to a uh, conclusion. That is, uh, apparently 920 is not good at double precision computation. But we can think about how important uh, the double precision computation in HPC world. In fact, there's two views uh, or, or two, two kind of sound. The one is the double precision computation is not so important. The other one is we need to use a very high precision to decrease the errors in chaos system. Uh, it only appears a, a very small uh, errors if you if you ju judge it with a uh, million per sec. But another sound is uh, another wise is uh, also brained by a professor in SJTU. Uh, his name is Liao Shijin. He developed a CNS system called Clean Numerical Simulation. He used a very long hundreds of digits to to extend the precision, and found many uh, new solution on like uh, three body problems. So, uh, of course, probably we will try to solve these double precision problems in the future. But we can see it has many other advantages. For example, it's good topology designs for threading. It's very nice. Then his high bandwidth, low latency, uh, all this kind of reason uh, we can see is 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 he does well in many memory. Oh, sorry, this is a typo. Memory bound applications. But also, if your applications uh, do not fit a scalable ability approach such such as threading for example if your applications on, can only scale up using MPI then it is not very appropriate to use on Huawei's chip so this is all my talk for today thank you yes you mean this one that's next one Next one? That's next. next. This one? Uh, yeah. Yes. 1.5. <laughs> okay. So, do you know the why? <laughs> what? what? You, you, you mean that the double precision is the, uh, the oh, uh, yes. one point? Uh, you can see here that uh, when we use double precision uh, instruction, its throughput decreases to half of single precision uh, through okay. So this causes the, the, the decreasing of performance on Huawei's chip. And you compare to the processor of the 6148. So what kind of processors? Uh, 6148. You mean? Yeah, you, you compare the, uh, the, uh, the, the uh, processor to, to the Number of the six, six one four eight processor. Yeah. So that what, what kind of processors? What, what what do you mean? What kind of? <laughs> so how many cores? Yeah yeah yeah. Yeah. Yeah yeah. 
Oh, sorry, I have to explain that. Hi 1616 is uh, the previous version of uh, 920. Uh, how, many per, how, how many cores? Uh, the course number is 32. 32, yeah. You talk about, oh, you talk about uh, OpenMP not yeah. scaling up too well. Which OpenMP implementation do you use for that? Is it the GNU one or the, was that the Intel one? The Intel one. Okay. Because the GNU one has a known problem with scalability, so that would explain it. But if it's oh, the yeah, Intel one. I will try that. Yeah. Don't, no, don't use the GNU one. It doesn't scale well. No, I mean, I, I will. I will compare between these two. Okay, the LLVM one is similar to the Intel one, so that's a, a good one. If you want to use an open source compiler on ARM, then you pick the OpenMP from LLVM. You can use GCC, yeah. but you pick the OpenMP from LLVM. Oh, thank you. Sure. Okay, any other questions? I have a question. Uh, I want to no, if it is easy or very difficult to port a application to the uh, ARM CPU. Uh, and the second problem is uh, how much effort still need if we want to optimize the applications? And uh, how much is the performance gap between the original one and the optimized one? I think the first question is, is relative complicated to answer because you know it uh, due to the API compatibility you can just compile something and run it so that's the simplest question uh, simplest answer but if you want to achieve a, a not bad performance you have to fit your code to its structure that's why I, I'd like to call I'd like to divide the the code optimization into two parts. The first part is optimization. The second part is code adjusting. So I think your mean is how much effort that we need to do code adjusting, right? Um, this afternoon, I think Pack will give another talk on, on how to migrate to, right? The, the, So, so I think he can give you more details. And on second uh, question, uh, I do, I have do code optimization for for about seven or eight years. So I can't give you some standard that how much effort is much, <coughs> but they do have some some uh, some principles. First, you need to you need to import a roofline model. Then you can find what kind of bottleneck of your application is. Then you could uh, you can est estimate what kind of effort do you need to to do on your code and how many lines on your in your code that that appears in this bottleneck. So that's because you know. Applications are very different, so I can't give you a standard that, that, that if this is good effort or bad effort or uh, or ninja effort. <laughs>